Okay. It's been a while and I'm back. Let me explain to y'all what's going on here. What I want to do is pick up where we left off and then I'm going to complete the entire project here over the weeks uh, ahead. Um, excuse me, I'm tired. I've had a long two and a half days, but I think this is very important. It's worth my time and yours. Okay, if you recall and you've been following me along, this has been about my one-way stator. Now, the reason I call it one-way is because it favors magnets, these, which are on the armature, so these are armature magnets, favors this, these magnets to go this way. So, but if you try to go backwards, it resists it. The whole principle behind what I've done here is that this side here has zero, I repeat, zero uh, flux coming out of here. Inside of here are, is one big honking neodymium magnet. It's pretty big. And uh, it's two inches, two inches by inch by quarter of an inch. So we have here zero flux escaping. Here, this is an open face. There's no shielding right here. Even though it looks like it, that's just aluminum foil tape. That's all that is. I should not have used aluminum foil tape because, as you all know, aluminum and magnets, when they cross paths, sets up what is known as eddy currents, which acts as a braking uh, action, like a brake on a car. But the aluminum foil is so thin it's very negligible. But I'll eventually we'll rebuild this with clear tape. Okay, now what we have here, here's a mock-up. There's an empty one, no magnet in it. And this is what we have here. It's just this one here. It's missing the other two layers inside. But the lines inside illustrate where the other two layers of shielding would have gone. Okay, and then where, of course, the magnet would have ended up inside. Now, let me show you how this actually works because it is one way. The way we can tell that is by doing this. You take this, and you give it a little nudge this way, it wants to bounce back. A little nudge, one more nudge. Okay, now if we take the same magnet and nudge it this way, watch what happens. Just a little tiny nudge. Oops, I didn't give it quite enough. A little nudge. Uh, there you go, went right on through. That's the key. It went through. The, uh, here's what's going on. Newton's third law of motion says, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. If that was true in this particular case, this magnet would go here, back and forth, back and forth, littler, 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 until it found its equilibrium in the middle. But it won't. Actually, watch, watch what happens when I let go of this. It takes off. Now, that's not supposed to happen, at least not by Newton's third law of motion. Now, because this side here has zero magnetic flux attraction, that means the only attraction here is magnet to steel. Instead of on this side, we have magnet directly to magnet. These are opposing forces, so these are like forces, so it pushes it. So... Once it clears through here, which this, this plane here is at a tilt. So because it's at a tilt to this plane, it acts like a ramp. And the magnet pulls and it sweeps in. And then when it gets to the other side, then the magnet sees the, the positive force. He's taken off again. Sees the like polarity and just goes whoosh. Okay? So that's why this works. Back it up again. Just a little bit of a nudge. And voila, okay? It's not supposed to do that, at least by Newton's third law of motion, it's not supposed to. The whole premise of my idea here was real simple years ago. Magnet, magnet to magnet attraction is far stronger than magnet to steel. So the, the difference between those two attractions can be used to set up an imbalance in the system. Because if the system is balanced, then Newton's third law of motion takes over and nothing works, nothing goes anywhere. So 
That's the whole premise here behind what I'm doing. Now, to show you how well this works, check this out. I claimed, I said there's no magnetic flux back here. This is a box, like this one here, all the way around, except there's two other layers missing. Those layers are over here. In a moment, we'll get into that. If you take a screwdriver and you tap the back of this, nothing happens. Go to the front. doesn't stick to the screwdriver. But if you turn this around, and now you do it to the front, now it sticks. So what I have here is a completely shielded magnet to the point there's just no flux coming out. None. If there's any, it's so little, it's, it's negligible. Okay, so that means when this magnet is, sees this and is approaching the back side of this, yes, the back side. This is, this is the face, that's the back side. The magnet at an angle is swooping down in a circle, like coming in for like a landing, like an airplane. It comes in here at an angle, swoops across this because this is tilted in relationship to the other magnet and it picks up speed because this magnet to metal attraction then when it gets to the end of this it runs out of runway and suddenly it goes off the end and the positive or like polarities see each other and then it pushes it so it attracts it here pulls it across the momentum or inertia takes over this edge just enough, that's all you need, just enough counts, and then this field of repulsion takes over and pushes the magnet on through. This is not supposed to be possible under the law of Newton's third law of motion. Anyway, it works. Okay, so this is how I do the shielding. It makes this happen. Now, there is a video online that I put up first called Shielded, it's, I think the title's called um, Shielded, The Magic Bullet. About two weeks later, a month later, I don't know how long afterwards, he put up another video named after mine saying Shielded is not the magic bullet. He performed his experiment wrong. What he failed to do in his experiment is he took his Shielded and put it directly up against a magnet. It doesn't work that way because the current, the, the um, flux just transfers directly from the shielded directly into his magnet and vice versa. Okay, what you have to do here to make this work the way you see here, the way this works, you have to create spacing. I'm using these spacers that came with the magnets. They're a quarter of an inch spacers. And apparently the industry, the, the magnetic industry who makes these magnets, recognizes that if you get it just about this far apart, then the person who purchased the magnets can easily separate them from one and another without a lot of trouble. Okay, so I use these as spacers. They are perfect. This spacing changes everything. If it's much less than this width of this, it doesn't work. So anyway, so what I've done here is I've set this up for demonstration. There's the magnet on this side here. It's, it's a neodymium uh, M42. And watch this. See? No magnetism. Even though we are within a half inch of that magnet. Now I'll show you something. Watch this. I'm pretty far away from this. And this is affecting that wheel. These magnets are powerful. They're real powerful when you get within like two inches of these things. Watch this. See, it's following the magnet. Okay. But when you do this on the back side, it doesn't follow it. See, turn it around. Now it wants to follow it again. See? Turn it around. I have no more control. Okay. So that's what I've done here. 
The shielding is truly the magic bullet because it allows you to set up and build a stator. This is called a stator where you have shielded on top, which is the faceplate that these magnets will see, sees the steel, but it's not seeing the flux. It's not seeing the magnetic, uh, the magnetism underneath this shielding, which would be magnet to magnet attraction. The actual magnet to magnet attractions up here at front. It's, it's open face. I'm sorry, there's aluminum foil over it because if I don't have aluminum foil over it, these magnets want to pop out during use. Okay, so go back to the screwdriver one last time. As you can see here, we've got zero flux here, and we've got zero flux here, but yet if we turn it around, all hell is loose. See? Okay, so this shielding technique does indeed work. That gentleman's debunking video is absolutely 100% BS. He never bothered to go to the site where I give detailed instructions on how to build the shielding to create the James Roney stator. That's what I called it. Okay, I didn't have a better name for it. Somebody suggested I need to come up with a better name. If you're, if you're gun ho and you think a better name, so be it. Okay, so that's what's going on here. So what I need to do here at this point is I need to create one stator here. See how it took off all of a sudden? Look at that, see that? I just put it there and it went, psh, took off. Okay, so I need here at this point, at six o'clock, nine o'clock, 12 o'clock, and three o'clock. I need to build three more stators like I had been saying before. I built another one, but I took it apart so everybody could see what was going on because a lot of people thought there was something magical going on. In fact, the, the batteries I used to use in these things, turns out I don't need them. I was using dead batteries to shun the, the, the flux. Well, as you can see here, it, it works fine without the batteries. So, um, I'm not sure what else I can tell you here at this point in time. Other than the fact that I wanted to give you all an update on what's going on. Now, there's one more thing on the agenda, and that is the V-Gate. Uh, the V-Gate challenge. I believe that I don't know why there's no viable models that you can buy from the marketplace of a V-Gate. I highly suspect they don't work very well or just, they just don't work at all. So I want to make a challenge. I believe that one of us magnet heads can indeed get a V-Gate to actually work. If I can get this to work, which is not supposed to work, then I bet you we can get a V-Gate to work. Now, there's some other things I've discovered that can modify the V-Gate that might make it more viable. So with that said, I want to cut this short. Um, I guess that's it for now. I just want to give everybody an update so everybody kind of had to get a sense. No, I'm back. I went through a lifelong tribulations that caused delays and health issues and then being financially broke and then losing my house and then obtaining another one. It's all good. I'm fine. And some of you all out there contributed uh, some money for me to buy um, exotic magnetic shielding. That money will indeed get used for magnetic shielding, finally. It's still there on GoFundMe. It, the money's still sitting there. I haven't touched it on purpose. All right, um, that's it. And I'll get this uh, shielding ordered and so we can take this to a new level. Alrighty, uh, thank you kindly so much for watching. Take care.